Hello, this is Dr. Mark Gordon bringing you our new Peptides for Health series. In 2019, the Millennium's veteran TBI practice expanded to include regenerative peptides for brain and body. After providing peptide protocols for over 200 veterans and civilians, I was invited to be a consultant to the Clinical Peptide Society, where I shared my clinical experiences using several peptides. We used a lot of BPC-157, but just as much of IGF-1 LR3, a peptide that has been in the shadows, but is an incredible peptide for many conditions. So let's begin. In the coming months, we'll be discussing key peptides that are used as regenerative tools. When presenting a peptide, its function and use will be supported by peer-reviewed medical articles as well as case presentations. These presentations are for educational purposes only and are not intended to be used to provide specific diagnoses or treatment protocols. This first presentation is on insulin-like growth factor 1, LR3, also referred to as IGF-1. This is a comparison chart between IGF-1 and IGF-1 LR3. The major improvements in the LR3 form is the extended half-life from 8 to 10 minutes to 20 to 30 hours, and the enhanced therapeutic effects on muscle growth and repair. Additionally, LR3 enhances the ribosomal protein synthesis with a side effect of lowering homocysteine. A downside of the extended half-life of LR3 is it can increase the risks of hypoglycemia, the lowering of blood glucose, which can cause irritability, fatigue, mental confusion, and loss of consciousness. This is because IGF-1 is called insulin-like growth factor for a reason. It, in fact, has about a 10% crossover with the insulin receptors in the brain and body. Just remember what type 3 diabetes is, and you'll see where an additional benefit can be claimed. Just to provide some context, in the brain, estradiol is needed to maximize growth hormone production by the pituitary. Growth hormone normally peaks production between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. Therefore, morning measurements will always be seen as relatively low. The caveat here is that morning elevations above 50 percentile of the range can be caused by five reasons which need to be looked for. Nonetheless, growth hormone and estradiol are the signals the liver needs to generate IGF-1 production. Medication like anastrozole will block the brain's production of GH and the liver's production of IGF-1. This chart shows the effects of growth hormone on the left and IGF-1 on the right, which are the same in enhanced benefits from the LR3 form. Many of the GH benefits of the body are further embellished or enhanced by IGF-1. Key issues that we will discuss in subsequent slides are IGF-1's ability to lower inflammation produced by C-reactive protein, homocysteine, and pro-inflammatory cytokines. The blocking of myostatin so that we can grow and repair muscles, and many avenues that lead to improvement in brain functioning. This article and slide present the benefits of IGF-1 in the brain and body. Major benefits in the brain are improved neuroprotection and regeneration, reduced microglia activation causing a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines, lowering of the oxidative load and free radical damage to enzyme systems and neurons. Below the neck, IGF-1 reduces inflammation, modulates the immune system, improves uh, antioxidant capacity, enhances repair of muscle and skin, while promoting proliferation of the cells that become repair cells. And finally, improves insulin resistance, which makes cells more sensitive to insulin's ability to lower elevations in blood sugar. Not too bad of reasons to make sure IGF-1 levels are always in the healthy range. Recovery after orthopedic surgery procedures can be improved upon if the body is in the regenerative mode made possible by the presence of several important hormones aside from IGF-1, like growth hormone, vitamin D, estradiol, and PTH. As an aside, the presence of an elevation of homocysteine does not always mean a deficiency of B6, B9, and B12, but can be due to lack of GH and IGF-1. In the brain, IGF-1 can enhance the production of myelin, which is lost in neurodegenerative conditions like multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, 
and ALS. IGF-1 increases neurons production of neurotransmitters and their receptors, normalizing communication via the dendritic synaptic connections. IGF-1 increases blood flow and removes amyloid associated with Alzheimer's disease. After repetitive head injury or a concussive trauma, damage to neurons does occur. This is commonly referred to as shearing or diffuse axonal injury where the axon supporting synaptic connections to other neurons is severed. The science postulates that the reason why these damaged neurons cannot be repaired is not due to a lack of an intrinsic mechanism to grow a new axon, but the failure of the post-traumatic and inflammatory environment to foster repair. The presence of IGF-1 assists in the repair or regeneration of damaged neurons. As you will learn from the five cases to be presented in this vignette, I commonly add IGF-1 to a peptide protocol that uses BPC-157 since in the injectable form it addresses tendons and ligaments, while IGF-1 enhances protein synthesis that can be used in the repair of tissues connected to ligaments like muscles. In this case of a partial tear of the lateral aspect of the quadriceps muscle, our tripeptide protocol was used that consists of IGF-1, LR3, thymosin 500, and BPC-157 injected daily for two weeks, then held for two weeks, and then restarted for an additional two-week cycle. The two-week hiatus, as I was trained, is to give the tripeptide blend an opportunity to work. This patient had about an 80% improvement at the end of four weeks and used the second round of the blend to achieve 100% resolution of symptoms by the end of six weeks from initiation of his treatment protocol. We have found that not everyone needs both two-week cycles for resolution of their injury. In this case of a 71-year-old male patient, his MRI showed a partial tear of the left hip labrum which caused pain and restricted range of motion. He was started on the tripeptide blend with two cycles on separated by an off cycle. At the end of six weeks, his hip pain was gone and he had unrestricted range of motion. As an aside, he stated that his morning back stiffness was gone. IGF-1 has some important anti-inflammatory benefits above and below the neck as previously indicated. This 36-year-old male developed lateral epicondylitis, also known as tennis elbow, after many heavy lifting sessions at the gym. Anatomically, this is due to inflammation at the elbow's bony prominences called the epicondyles and involves the extensor tendons, specifically the extensor carpe uh, radial brevis. He started the tripeptide blend for an anticipated two weeks, and by day seven, he regained full function without pain he was instructed to finish the two-week cycle while he returned to the gym. After two years, his tennis elbow has still not returned. This 38-year-old male with a history of blast trauma was diagnosed by the VA with TBI and PTSD and suffered from migraines three to four times a week. He needed a dark room, earplugs, and pain medication just to survive each day. We started him on IGF-1 and within two weeks, he had less frequent and less intense migraines. After six months on the complete Millennium Protocol, his migraines abated and he was able to find a job, a girlfriend, and return to working out at the gym. He in fact re-entered life. This 36-year-old male had chronic moderate to severe lower back pain due to multiple traumas sustained while deployed. He came to the Millennium with neuropsychiatric issues, which were evaluated using our 28-point biomarker panel. Based upon the results, he was started on a treatment protocol to address his traumatic neuroinflammation causing neurosteroid deficiencies. Some five months into his protocol, he felt he was psychologically and somewhat physically better to agree to spinal fusion. About six weeks before his surgical procedure, he was started on the tripeptide protocol. He had his surgery and by the fourth post-op day, he was, according to his surgeon and physical therapist, 95% back to normal. Presently, CW is running, swimming, and lifting at the gym, having lost nearly 50 pounds in seven months. 
If you would like to learn more about the science behind the assessment and treatment protocols developed by the Millennium, please go to our website at tbihelpnow.org. If you would like to join our growing independent network of healthcare providers and facilities, please go to the TBI team section at the same website. There you can fill out a request form for more information. Finally, our next Peptides for Health series will be on BPC-157. Until then, thank you very much.